Hello, this is Jade, one of many animals with reasons to be grateful to the Devon-based charity Animals in Distress, which each year cares for and rehomes hundreds of domestic animals. Two elderly ladies, Mrs Lang and Mrs Hunt, started this in 1981 and they were joined very shortly afterwards by Mrs Muriel Selick and her husband had a transport business which was just closing down and it was suggested that the garage in Ellicum Church Road could be used to sell items so that they could raise some money uh, and then rehome the animals that came into their care. So that was the very beginnings of it in 1981. This shop in Redenhill Road in Bavacombe uh, started uh, 13 years ago and we used this uh, instead of the garage that was being used originally and subsequently when the landlord decided to sell the premises we bought the, the whole premises here and eventually used the upstairs as offices. Each year, over a thousand animals are rehomed via the charity centre here at Ippelpen near Newton Abbott. Originally, we used to board our dogs uh, in commercial kennels, and it proved to be so expensive. Then we looked for our own property, and this was a uh, greyhound kennels. And uh, so we bought it nearly 12 years ago now, and it literally just had a few sheds and shacks, and uh, it's built up ever since. Obviously there was no catcheries or outer buildings at all. It's on, well we, we say it's about three acres. Puppies and kittens come to us for different reasons. This litter, uh, their mother was killed just a couple of days after they were born. So one of our staff has actually been bottle feeding them for six weeks and uh, they've all survived. Uh, kittens, they're found under hedges, they're found on building sites, they're found all over the place. Sometimes they come in with their mothers, sometimes just a litter on their own. Um, the baby rabbits normally come in, uh, we normally get the pregnant rabbit and end up with the babies once they're in here. When we're rehoming rabbits, we do ho um, home checks before they go because we want to ensure that they're not just going to be put in a hutch and left on their own in the garden. So the home checker goes around to ensure that they all have an enclosure to run in and the people realise that they are quite a responsibility to take on. These are various ducks that all live quite happily together. We just had one brought in this morning. Um, its friends were all killed by a fox during this week and uh, she's the only one left, so we've taken her in now for her own safety. Uh, but we don't rehome the ducks, they all stay here. All the dogs are exercised every day several times. Um, we've got a secure exercise area where they can run free off the lead or we have volunteers that come in and walk them around the lanes. They're in and out, they're very active during the day. This is the um, dog preparation area for the main kennel block. The tin dog food we get donated entirely. We, we never ever buy tin dog food. People donated in supermarkets. We have the bins in the supermarkets and we're very lucky. We occasionally have to buy biscuits in the mixer, but again, most of it is donated. And the dogs are fed twice a day, so we get through quite a lot of food. These are branches that somebody's donated to us. They've cut their apple trees down and they're used for the uh, birds, love them, and also the rabbits, they like them as well. This is the rodent room. We have um, rats, gerbils, mice and hamsters. Um, we had a lady brought in a box of hamsters that she'd found under her son's bed that she didn't know was there. And uh, they all had babies, so we ended up with about 16 hamsters at one point, which is quite common with the uh, rodents. I think the longest we've ever had a dog looking for home is two years, which is very, you know, very unusual. Normally, within a few weeks, we get a pretty good turnover. Um, especially during the summer when we've got the kittens, they go obviously pretty quickly. Uh, the older dogs and cats take longer, but um, usually, I suppose a month, we could say a month is a sort of average turnover. They're how we call them our pussy pensioners. Um, they're all 10 years and upwards. Uh, most of those are here because their owners have either died or had to go into residential accommodation. 
Again, they are for rehoming, but if they don't get rehomed, then they stay here and their accommodation, they've got settees and chairs and it's just like home from home for them. We have volunteers come every day that help walk the dogs and with the cleaning as well. Um, we also have work experience students that help us. We have the staff as well. The actual cost to run the charity is half a million a year. Our actual running costs at the moment are half a million a year. And that all comes from fundraising, uh, legacies. We've got no um, official funding at all, no government funding. We have lots of activities. We have the dog, annual dog show here. We have an open day. We have amateur dog racing. We also have um, stalls at local events, such as the Totnes Show and the Babacom Downs, uh, which bring in a lot of money. They're mainly run by volunteers. The only reason we would ever have an animal put to sleep would be on veterinary advice if it was uh, too ill or too dangerous to rehome, which, thank goodness, doesn't happen very often. Um, but otherwise, we, we always say, even if we've got to wait, there's, there's always somebody somewhere will suddenly turn up. So there we are, a quick look at the work of the Animals in Distress Centre here at Ipplepen near Newton Abbott. But centres like this, of course, cost a lot of money to operate. And by donating to a local charity like this, you have the opportunity to come along and see where your money has been spent. So, why not come along and visit the animals? <laughs>